The 6500 series also allows the addition of a two-channel, high-end 3D digital effects system, or DME. Let me show you how that works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my little effect here. And now I'm going to clear out stuff and I'm going to bring myself up here. And we're just going to key something on top here. Okay, we'll take the food show here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this in the DME. So to do that, I'm going to go to the key adjust menu for ME2, and I'm using key 1 right here. And I'm going to turn on the DME. Let's clear that out. And now using the trackball, I have the ability to change this around. I'm going to change the background here to something other than my son's face. We can move this around. Now what this has over the built-in resizers is true rotation. So I have the ability to do true rotation and perspective even on the Z axis, whereas the resizers only have X or Y rotation, not X and Y together separately, and no Z. I can also do some other very cool effects. Let's hop up into the DME menu up here. So starting out, we have the normal stuff, your border, your soft borders, and your crops. We've all seen those a hundred times. We're going to turn on a beveled edge here. So we have a glass beveled edge. We can also change that into a colored bevel edge, and I've got a lot of different settings here that I can change. We can come over here and turn on a drop shadow, and we can have it out a little bit. Let me turn off our density a little bit here. Soften it just a tad. And if we want to, we can even change the color of the drop shadow. Okay, so what we're going to do now is explore some other places. Video Modify, this is where you get defocus, and we have some of the best looking defocus there is out there. Notice that there is no deep black edge going into this picture. It looks very, very camera-like. Come over here to a freeze, and you can program timelines to freeze certain things or time strobe them. So you can come over here and have a different time strobe if you like that kind of effect. Turn that off. We can go into nonlinear effects. Now, only one channel, channel one, has the ability to do nonlinear effects. But we can do a page turn if we want to. So let's go over here and adjust our page turns. We can roll it around, change the radius a bit. Actually, my favorite one is the page roll. So we'll come over here and roll up the page a little bit like this. And now what I like the most is if I combine some lighting with this, I go into the lighting menu, turn on lighting, and turn on preset lighting. What I'm going to get is this. I'm going to be able to say how much light, how much shade, I'm going to take my shade modify and I'm going to change the width back just a little bit like this, soften it a little bit more, come back to light modify, change the width back, soften it a bit, and pop back here. And now I have a beautiful lighting, which gives a nice texture and nice depth to my page turn. Now, of course, I have full transform capability here. I can make it bigger or smaller or rotate it any way I want to, in addition to the nonlinear effects. And we do have some other nonlinear effects. Let me clear this off and shrink it down a bit. We have the ability to do things like broken glass. So we'll come over here and do a transition of broken glass. You can kind of move this. You can randomize it a bit. You can change the spiral and how it's going to go. All those kind of things. And all these things are keyframable, of course. Moving over, we're going to go to corner pinning. Now, corner pinning is a really cool feature. I'm going to change my background here to a uh, thing of Times Square. And inside, I'm going to change this to a picture of my son. Now, obviously, I've got a little bit of a keying issue here. This is no problem. What I'm going to do is come into here and do the trick we did before. Do a split, set a signal, come up there and find something that has a white key signal and set it so I got a nice picture there. Now, what I want to do is I want to make it look like my son drew is on this billboard right here in Times Square. Now this is really hard to do on a DME because as much as we've got rotation and I've got cropping and it's really hard to get the absolute perfect perspective here. So corner pinning comes to the rescue here. So what I'm gonna do is bring him up full screen. I'm going to go back to the DME menu here and I'm gonna turn on corner pinning. Now corner pinning lets me adjust each corner independently. So right now I'm adjusting the position of X for the upper left corner. So I can see I want to put it right here on this billboard. Then I'm going to come down here and adjust the bottom left. Move it over a little teeny bit. If it helps, we can actually put targets on here, little markers to show where the corner is going. I'm going to do the top right now. Uh, he's going to be very unhappy about the way he looks on that. All right, and we're going to do the bottom. 
so that it doesn't kind of blow us out like it did there. Okay, we're going to bring this right here. And then last but not least, let's finish the top. Okay, now, obviously he's a little squished at the moment. So let me turn the corner marker off. Let's adjust this just a hair. Okay, that's pretty close. Now, obviously he's a little squished. So, see this button here called Crop Link? Let me show you what Crop Link is going to do. If I go back to the DME and I go up to the Edge Crop menu and I adjust Horizontal, it's going to link the crop to how much processing I've done on the corner pinning. In other words, it's going to leave the corners exactly where they are. And now, doing a little bit of adjustment like that, I've got a beautiful picture of my 11-year-old son on Broadway. All right, so I'm going to do one more cool thing. I'm going to turn on key two, and I filled key two with the same background as before. By linking the DMEs together, I can actually zoom them at the same time. So I've got two channels here, and I can zoom them in to my son and make it look like a nice transition. Okay, let me show you a couple of other cool effects. So let's bring this back up, clear everything out of here. And I'm going to go back over to nonlinear for just a second here. And we'll do something like the mosaic glass effect where I can amplify frequencies, change some things around, those kind of things. Move this around. A couple other things you can do in here is a kaleidoscope effect where you can have the number of kaleidoscopes, the phase of them, how much of an offset there is, moving around, all that kind of stuff. I can mirror things make it cyclic, come back, do a swirl, we'll start a transition here a little bit, come around, oh he's really going to love the look of this when he sees it. We can change it, and again all these things can be built as a transition. So for instance, I'm going to start this off in black right here, completely uh, off the screen, and I'm going to go over and go to effect, and I'm going to turn on DME1 as a timeline. And I'm going to go to an empty register number one, hit edit enable, and insert a keyframe. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back up to nothing. I'm going to take my area back to zero, and I'm going to take my center back and my outer back, and everything's here. I'm going to hit another insert. I'm going to rewind and run the effect. So now I've created a timeline of an interesting transition of almost kind of a hurricane-like. By the way, I can also add to this timeline. If I want to, I can say maybe make it wait for a moment right here by inserting another keyframe. Maybe come over here, insert a keyframe here, and come over and insert a keyframe here. And when I run this, it's going to come up this way, come back, and go right there. You know what? I want to make a little swoop on that. So I'm going to go into Run Control. I'm going to back this up and about right here. Let me show you the timeline screen, right in the middle of these two keyframes. I'm going to insert another keyframe, and I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to take this up like this, I'm going to rotate it a bit, and I'm going to modify that keyframe. Now watch what happens when I run it. We're going to do this effect first, it's going to kind of do this, move around, and then swoop and come back. It's a great way to add a little spice to an effect. Let me show a couple of other effects that the DME is capable of. We're going to come down to the input output menu and we have graphics. I'm going to turn on some graphics on the screen to help me to be able to know what it is I'm messing with when I'm creating a complex effect. For instance, I can see here that I'm looking at the front of channel 1 because it says 1F. I can also turn on some other stuff like the axis of where the DME is going. So if I change this and I change my axis select, if I move source and move my space, I can tell where I'm at here. You can see here it's toggling between front and back. I can also come over and have the axes names in case I want to see them. Tell me where the things are pointed. I can select a wireframe. I can even select a grid on the screen to show me exactly where things are. And a really cool thing is I can turn on scaling. If I bring the scale down, it's going to show me graphically where my, my picture is according to the outside of the raster. So if you have a monitor or something that's over scanned and it's really hard to tell when you're really off screen, this really helps. Now let me show you one other thing on the control panel right here on key 1 on ME2. Notice here now that my key 1 is high tallied, which of course it would be because that's where my key for the DME is and it's on the air. 
Let me turn all this other stuff off. Watch what happens when I move, just reposition the DME off the screen. As soon as it goes off screen, the tally goes low. The switcher is smart enough to know when you can't see something and it will automatically low tally. It saves a whole lot of trouble having to create complex effects when you have a box starting off the screen so the talent doesn't get a tally light. Lastly, let me show you just a couple more things. We have sketch. Sketch effect will allow you to turn something into a chalk drawing. So we can take this with the clip, some gain, add a little bit of chroma to it. And it kind of looks like you ran this through a graphics uh, program a little bit. And again, depending on what you put onto it, here's the, uh, here's the same thing from Times Square. I just changed the input so we can tweak that a little bit. And again, I'll, we can even do it with some live video. So here's our motorcycle clip we've been watching all day. And an interesting thing is if you combine this with some other effects, look, if I go into freeze, turn on time strobe, Make a little bit of a thing here. You can create an interesting looking effect. And one other thing, if we go down in here into lighting and trail and select motion decay, what we can do is we can put a decay and create a very interesting looking effect here. We've got a soft dissolve between the frames. It's hesitating for about a half frame and it looks like it's been sketched with some crayons. We can also do a couple of effects like metal where it turns things into sheening metal and you can change uh, some ratios of how it looks and uh, how intense it is and things like that. And again, we can go back and put things in it. Ugh, he's not going to like that. We can change that, move things around. And last but not least, we can do two-channel combined effects. So again, let's take this box down a little bit. And now, let's go down to my multifunction module. I'm going to go back to key adjust, make sure I'm on key one, and see here where it says DME1 is green. That means that DME1 is assigned to key one on ME2, and OA means it's on the air, it's high tally. I'm also going to add DME2 to this. Now this is really cool because it means there is a combiner. So I'm going to go over here now, and I'm going to select another source, this live source. I have the ability with this, with a two-channel effect, I can come in to the global effect area, and I can change my priority. I can also mix my priority if I want to. And I can also do automatic priority. So what that means is if I go into source space and I change the position, it automatically understands who is on top. I want to make sure you understand that when you combine two channels of DME, the source that's feeding the second channel is actually in a special location. On the bus that you're doing it, there's a special bus called external DME. And that allows me to feed the second source. I can't use another keyer because it's busy being a keyer and I would lose the whole point of a combined DME. Okay, and almost as a grand finale for DMEs and resizers and combiners, let me show you some really cool stuff. So we start out with our two box. That's just using two keyers on ME1. And we can switch using the shot box to a big little. Then we can do a three box. Now, this is all happening on a single ME because what I've got is I've got key one with a resizer key two with a resizer, key three is using one of the 3D DME channels, and of course key four is my frame. I can do a different kind of three box, same kind of thing, key one, key two, key three is the DME. And now I can even get a four box on a single ME, because key one here is the resizer, key two is the resizer, key three is both channels of DME. And actually let me go ahead and put something else inside that. So key three is both channels of DME. Right, like that, and key four is still my frame. And just because I feel like showing off today, let's do a six box. Now this six box effect is really cool because it's only coming from one ME. Now that ME happens to be program preset, but program preset has eight keyers. Key one and key two are resizers. Key three and key four are the two channels of DME. Key five and key six are the other two resizers that are built in and key eight is the frame. So all this is on one single ME, and I've still got two MEs with eight keyers left over. Now, I'm gonna create one more effect here. Let's turn all this stuff off. I'm gonna come back up here to ME2. Let's put our nice background up here again. And I'm gonna turn a key on, and we'll use my sun again. 
So I'm going to go over to my multifunction module. I'm going to hit key adjust. And since I'm working on ME2, I'm going to select ME2. I'm going to verify key 1. And I'm going to go here to page 3. Now, whoops, I can't take one of the DME channels because they're both acquired. You can tell that because they're not orange, they're light green. Instead of having to hunt all over the switcher to find who owns this to get it off, I'm going to hold down override and hit DME. And now I've just grabbed it. So it turned bright green and it's on the air because that's where the keyer is. So I'm going to shrink this back here. Let's create a little timeline to have some fun here. So let's go here and maybe start like this. Take it off screen. Again, notice that my key light goes low tally when I go off screen. Let's go to Effect, select DME 1. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go from 1 to 99, which are the normal registers. I'm going to go to some special registers. I'm going to go to 110. Now this is a legal register, but it's a special register. And it allows me to make custom DME wipes. So I'm going to enter into that. We can see up on my menu display that I'm on Effect 110 with DME 1 with no keyframes. I'm going to hit Edit Enable, and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I want it to come full screen. So I'm going to hit Clear Work Buffer to bring it up full screen, and I'm going to insert another keyframe. Let's rewind and run this. Well, it's a nice effect. It's a little on the boring side. So let's spice that up a little bit. I'm going to hit my Run Control, back it up a little bit, go right here, move the DVE over a little bit like this, maybe come over here, insert another keyframe on the timeline, right there. And now, again, let's run control it a bit. And again, we're going to come back over here, move it a little bit more, something like this, and insert one more keyframe. Let's rewind and run it. Wow. Let's slow that down just a tad. We're going to do that by going to page two and hitting effect duration. Right now it says my entire duration is one second, which is why it's kind of shocking. So let's take this and make it two seconds. We're gonna hit enter, and now we're gonna exit out of that, rewind, and run. Okay, I'm not gonna win any Emmy Awards for this, but it's kind of making my point where I can create anything I want to. Also, let's go to one of the keyframes here, go to the DME menu, and let's add a little bit of an edge here. Uh, I kind of like that uh, beveled edge we did. So let's turn on a beveled edge with some color, bring it up like that. Now, I want to put this on all the keyframes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say from two, I'm going to hit clear and say one, enter four. That's basically all the keyframes. And now I'm going to exit out and I'm going to go back to page one and say mod. Now, if I rewind, they're all going to have my border. Only one other thing that I want to do to make this work right is on the last keyframe, I want the border to kind of disappear because otherwise it'll be on the screen forever. So I'm going to make it go like that and I'm going to hit a single modify. Let's rewind. Perfect. I love it. All right, so we're going to store this effect into number 110. Now, here comes the fun part. Let's go ahead and turn off the DME here. And I'm going to turn this keyer off and just go down to Program Preset. So I want to do a wipe between the motorcycle and the food person here. But I want to do a DME. If I hit DME, it's going to do the last DME wipe that was called up. So let's change that. We're going to double punch DME. We're going to come to the DME wipe menu. By the way, this has a whole lot more DME wipes in it than we had using just the resizers on the 3000s. We can go over here and do things like a wave fade. We can do ripples, we can do built-in page turns and page rolls, we can do 2D and 3D transitions, we can do our little swirly effect, we can do some melts, and some defocusing to go between sources. These are all just built into the switcher. But the one I want is the one we just made. So we're going to go under User Program, and I've got a couple of custom ones I've made in here already. For instance, the page turn, I have it with some lighting on it, since the built-in ones don't have lighting. I made my own special defocus, kind of does a defocus and a dissolve at the same time. And then I made one which is kind of crazy, where a sphere comes in and it kind of expands up. But the one we just did is this one. Let's run it. 
there it goes. And I'll run it with an auto trans this time. By the way, the auto trans is going to run at the speed that you tell the transition on the ME to run. It has nothing to do with the speed that we told the effect to run. So if I wanted this to run slower than one second, I would go to transition rate for program preset and enter in 220, let's say, enter. Now it'll run a little slower. But I can preset another source, do the effect, preset another source, do the effect, and then I can quickly change to another one and do another effect. And all of these can be stored in my DME wipe snapshots. So I have my page turn effect here. We can store that. Then I'm going to go over to the effect we just made, put this in here, and I'm going to store that. And let's go pick one of these 2D, 3D transition things and let's store that. So I can run this. I can come up here, and I can come up here, and I can come up here. 